Boros returns to One Punch Man, and he's teaming up with Blast. We also have Garo continuing his battle with Saitama, and Garo admitting defeat. We got a new waifu in this series, and we have this? What the hell? I'm Mastor, and this is One Punch Man chapter 164. Boy, do we have a lot to talk about that's coming up right after this. Every once in a while, a program comes along that just changes everything, like think Discord. And today's sponsor is one of those game-changing programs. It's called Opera GX, and it's a free web browser that seamlessly integrates with your entire computer. But there's so many cool things about it that I'm actually literally blown away at how incredible this browser is. Like, first of all, you can easily customize your browser with special themes, wallpapers, colors, light and dark mode, there's seemingly like an endless amount of combinations of utility and things that you can do with this. One of the coolest things about it that I've seen is this bar on the left where you can do things like watch YouTube videos, Twitch streams, open up your Discord. You can pop out videos so you can watch them while you're doing other things on your computer. You can have some nice mellow music playing through the browser itself. And most importantly for gamers, you can put a limit on the RAM usage and CPU usage of Opera GX as you're gaming. Opera GX just seems to run so smoothly. Like there's no lag, it's clean, it's crisp, it's user-friendly, it has everything all in one place. It's like you don't even need a lot of these programs and browsing because it's just all there for you and it's free. And if you're worried about importing all of your different bookmarks, you can easily do that with one click and you're ready to go. Honestly, Opera GX is one of my favorite sponsors because this is something that I'm using it on a daily basis. It integrates with Twitch and Discord. It has an award-winning design, a built-in VPN, doesn't take up a lot of computer space, it's perfect for literally anyone. So go ahead, check out the link in the description and download Opera GX for free right now. Okay, let's start off with the cover, the ultimate in martial arts and also how to be human, the abominable fist that turned against God. And what this is talking about is, I think it's really tying into the end of this chapter as we get this sit down between Saitama and Garo. And I just wanna say off the bat, a lot of fans are extremely pissed about this. They're like, what is going on? You're ruining the web comic. Where's the serious table flip? And I guess I, I understand the frustration with this, but I ultimately like wanna see where this goes, especially now we have Blast and Boros, possibly Deep Sea King might be arriving as well. And I can't wait to talk about what's gonna happen after this chapter, because the battle between Saitama and Garo has broken some dimensional seal on Earth, where I believe God is being held. That whole confrontation between God and Saitama and Flashy Flash, when Saitama picked up the cube and God tried to grant him power, that prison appears to have been from Blast and this crew out in space. We get to see who some of this crew is in this chapter and it's absolutely amazing. We have Boros, or at least one of his species. So I'm more likely to say that this is one of his species, but it very well could be, could be Boros from another dimension. We get two references to different dimensions in this chapter, and we also know that Blast has dimensional capabilities. He can make pocket dimensions, he can go through rifts, through other dimensions, he can teleport through space. So possibly there is, you know, a parallel universe or multiple, like maybe it's following the multiverse of madness, you know, Doctor Strange sort of thing. Like there's all these replicas of people in different, different universes, different parallel universes. And perhaps this is Boros from another universe. It could be, but Boros did in his confrontation with Saitama also talk about his species as a whole. And I think it's very plausible here that this is just another one of Boros's species, potentially a good guy, potentially recruited by Blast, this galactic federation against God. And we actually didn't know when we saw this picture of Blast opening up a portal saying, I'm not the only one fighting out there. Was he talking about those are enemies, those are disciples of God that he's going up against, or is that part of his team? Well, we get confirmation in this chapter, yes, it's part of his team. They are out there in space or in another dimension fighting against God and trying to, I guess, just resist him and, 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 and lock him down in some sort of prisons or multiple prisons. I'm not really sure yet. We're gonna get more information on that probably in the next chapter. And I'm gonna cycle back to this a little bit later down the road. Let's talk about the battle between Saitama and Garo a little bit because it appears to have reached its climax at this point. So Garo has four arms now and he's just throwing this onslaught of punches at Saitama, pushing him back, like just flying at him at incredible speed and power. Obviously Saitama is just dodging everything. Like I love his 
faces here. He's like, oh, that's pretty sweet. How many hands do you have now? So Garo is saying technique, power, speed, attacks. How do I take this guy down? He's trying everything in his arsenal and he finally does his, his ultimate, I guess, technique where he slams his hands onto Saitama and then uses his other hands to like beam him down into earth. Like, like literally shooting, I guess it's that, remember that power attack he did against Saitama where he kicked him into the building and then did that key eye attack where it like blew up the, the buildings? I think he's doing this in the opposite direction to basically thrust him down into earth and we get this triple detailed double page sequence from Murata, which is just absolutely breathtaking. I don't know if this is Mount Fuji or just some big mountain, but it's just absolutely incredible. This is called Extreme Power Attack, and he thrusts Saitama down from the sky, down darting at like a lightning speed, like a freaking lightning bolt down into this mountain. The mountain just literally protrudes, creating this giant crater and shockwave directly through the earth, all the way out through the other side. So we were questioning, is Garo Boros level, right? He said Saitama is stronger than a mountain, and so we're like, oh, is Boros just mountain level well if he's able to do attacks of this scale as we see he starts protruding the earth he starts actual actually completely messing up the uh, magnetic and gravitational fields of earth as blast tells us so we get to see blast and the rest of his galactic crew the, like the basically the avengers they're completely surprised to see that the earth is bulging and a couple things are happening here uh three things at least so first of all Blast can tell what's going on on Earth. Like he knew, even though they're out in some other dimension, which it even says here, or out, they're out in space somewhere or something, he could just feel that something was wrong with Earth. And this is important because remember when he came back when God was trying to grant Tatsumaki power and he just quickly came back and he's like, oh, you resisted the deal, like you've become so strong. And then he just dipped. So he can like kind of, he has some sort of ties to God probably because he's, he's, I'm guessing the main culprit behind this dimensional prison that God is locked into. This is probably Blast doing with the help of this other crew because he states here that God is going to break through the dimensional seal. We've got to hurry and repair it. So he appears to need the help from Boros and this new female and this new lion guy, which look awesome. And this is just so exciting, dude, to see these new like blast level characters out there in the universe. This is building up so much hype for what's to come and for this final battle, which might not be that like distant. I mean, they're coming to Earth. All of this crew right now is coming to Earth. I don't know if they're going to interact with Saitama and Boros or not, but it's very possible. But they're coming to Earth to repair this dimensional seal that is holding God. The dimensional seal where I guess he was locked up in the fetal position when he was communicating with Saitama. So God may be able to break free right now. This could perhaps be the prophecy that was on the wall next to where the new Orochi was. That mural on the wall, that drawing of showing the sacrifices going to God. That's some sort of like prophecy and it appears that he has gotten the proper sacrifices and he's going to break free. So I did a whole video on this and it's looking more and more like this is the case, especially because by the end of this fight between Garo and Saitama, it looks like Garo has just given up. And I think the only way that this arc can even continue, because Garo knows he can't win. He's tried everything. Saitama's too strong. He just wants to die at this point. And I think God is going to break free and perhaps take over Garo or grant Garo power. And then perhaps we could get Garo versus Boros. And this is really exciting because this is something that like fans have been theorizing about forever, especially considering the fact that Boros is planet buster level and the feats that we have for Garo so thus far was only mountain level, now potentially planet buster as well, considering that he just bulged out the entire earth. I mean, if he does that a few times, he could probably mess up the earth's core and destroy the earth, right? Like you just did a bunch of ultimate power attacks like that. So let's talk about uh, real quick these new characters. We have this elf looking 
looking female cr character with gigantic jugs. She's a new, is she new best girl? I mean, I don't know. I still like Fubuki, but I want to learn more about her. She says it looks like some of the oceanic plates that had subducted into the earth via crustal movement were pushed back out by some powerful force. And Boros here, or Boros' brother maybe, or something says, oh, who could have done that? And he has a smile on his face. Maybe he knows about the prophecy that, you know, Boros was talking about. Maybe he's getting excited, uh, you know, thinking about uh, potentially some super strong opponent. That's the kind of the vibe that I'm getting. And now we have this lion soldier guy who I'm really, really excited. I love like lion warriors, dude. They're just always so badass, like in any show who says, I can't imagine any earthlings could have managed such a thing. It's probably just an anomalous tectonic shift. Either way, we've got to hurry up and repair it. So Blast creates a black hole and they all jump through it, I guess, and go to Earth. Meanwhile, Saitama is still getting pushed down on the Earth by Garo and he's had enough. So he looks up and he does consecutive normal punches awesome panel here by Murata. I mean, you could feel the destructive power coming from Saitama right here. And I love how though, even though it, it like the shot, like the camera angle is like from kind of behind Saitama, he still looks so serious and so powerful, right? And Garo, the expression on his face, like I'm, I am screwed. And yes, you are, but he's able to block all of these, all these consecutive normal punches. And he says, even with twice the fist, I can't keep up with him. And it blows off his two extra arms. So this is pretty interesting considering his resilience. We've seen him take one punch from Saitama in the last chapter and people were saying, oh, that's because Saitama isn't taking this seriously. He's not trying, but it's still consecutive normal punches, right? Like even if he's holding back, his consecutive normal punches against Boros completely blew up his entire body. Yes, he regenerated, but Garo, it only blew off two of his arms. I still think Garo is way more tanky than Boros. Maybe he doesn't have the destructive power, but he definitely has the resilience and perhaps their speed is about equal. My thought would be that Garo might be slightly faster, but Boros would probably be slightly stronger and Garo would be more resilient. Finally, Saitama lands a big punch to Garo's face. I love this panel. I screamed like a little fangirl when I saw this. This is a really cool panel. This is like a very like DBZ-esque punch, just the way he, it just his stance and everything. But yeah, I mean, you can feel the, the, the damage coming out. I mean, just look at the blood and the way that Garo's neck is torquing to the side and back. Um, and yeah, he's gigantic. And I just, I love the way Murata draws Saitama. It just looks like so chiseled, you know, like he's made out of rock, not too overly like muscular or anything. Just, just so, the anatomy is just so perfect and on model. And the way that he uses a combination of curves and kind of straight lines just gives it just such a nice feel. I, I, I absolutely love it. This one punch from Saitama, I mean, look at the damage caused from this one punch. It looks like a just crazy Dragon Ball Z you know, blast going through all these mountains. Like as soon as you see the punch and then you turn the page and see this panel, you can feel the speed and the damage. It get, it's one of those panels, I know I say this almost every week, but it's one of those panels you just look at and you just see it animated in your mind. Again, this is the magic of Murata. This is one of the things that makes him so exceptional as an artist. And Garo lays there in the water, breathing, trying to you know figure out what the hell just happened. He just got the living damage lights knocked out of him and I love that there's this huge explosion of water in the background and Saitama jumps down it's kind of like you can imagine this animated again the water spreading out in slow motion and Saitama you know drops down all quickly stands up you have Garo's feet coming out from the camera perspective just an absolutely breathtaking shot I mean the layout for this alone although simple is so well articulated and so clean Garo is speechless and Saitama asks are you satisfied yet? To which Garo, trying to get back on his feet, says, I've tried everything, technique, power, speed, attacks. It's no use. I'm out of ideas. Maybe this is how I'm supposed to die. Now, Garo also has said something interesting here that I had a feeling somewhere deep inside that this wouldn't work out. And I think he's saying that because there's still some doubt left in his system. And that's because he's kind of torn between his monster state and his human state. So I think in order to like really become the true absolute evil, he's got to entirely give up his human side, which is really what he was in the webcomic. And that's a little bit why you know, people are, are a little frustrated at what's going on right now in the One Punch Man manga because in the webcomic, he's like this bloodthirsty, merciless, merciless killer. He's like pure monster. He doesn't give a F, you know, and in this one, he's like torn. He throws a big punch at Saitama, who just simply catches it. 
and then says like, okay, let's talk. He says, it sounds like you have some issues. Let's go sit in this house floating in the water here. And then we get this crazy double panel, which apparently is a, an homage to some like old Japanese TV show or something like that. But this is completely unexpected. And yeah, it definitely looks a little goofy. You got this big gargoyle guy sitting like a little like kawaii girl or something like that. And I guess he's gonna like explain his reasoning for why he wants to be absolutely evil and you know, his, uh, his, his self-consciousness and stuff, I, I guess. I mean, I think he's pretty much just given up at this point. He's acknowledging that Saitama is stronger and he's kind of questioning his whole dream, right? So he's gonna sit down and iron things out with Saitama. Saitama knows that he has like a hero side in him. He's protecting innocent people. Even during this entire fight, he took out Sage Centipede and stuff like that. I think while they're talking, the, the more ominous thing about this is that you can see the moon with that ripple in it in the background. And this is what Murata has continuously referenced and shown us over and over and over again this imagery of the this creepy eerie moon in the background especially with Garo in its place and I think that's just a foretelling and a foreshadowing that God is going to probably take over Garo and I think it's very very possible here that we either get some God Garo hybrid going up against Blast and Saitama, which I thought would be like, you know, more of a final arc sort of thing, or perhaps God comes out and everybody fights God together, including Garo, and he becomes a good guy, right? That would be ridiculous. But there's this one panel here where these humans get knocked over onto this like temple with like a dragon head on it. Right after that, Blast says the dimensional seal has been is breaking. I think that wherever this seal takes place is probably in this temple, and I, I think that's why Murata is showing us this. It's like some secret hidden temple under the water or something like that, where the seal is made, and because Garo did this crazy attack on Saitama, pushing him through the earth, messing up the earth's tectonic plates and everything, the seal is breaking, the temple is revealing itself, and perhaps that's where God comes from or something. Maybe that's where Blast and company goes to try and fix the seal, which I don't think they're going to do. I think at the very least, God is going to come out a little bit. Perhaps we get to see a glimpse of his power as he takes on other heroes. Perhaps we get to see Blast and company fight Garo as Saitama just watches. So we could get that Garo versus Boros action. I mean, that would be insane. But I still think that Blast would just probably mop the floor with Garo and, and just about everyone else except Saitama. But this is extremely exciting because the next chapter is going to be absolutely ridiculous. Probably gonna get some talking between Saitama and Garo, and then it's gonna get interrupted by God, and then Blast and Boros are gonna show up, and probably also Sea King, because if you take a look at this picture, it definitely looks like that Sea King, so it's very possible that if this is Boros from another dimension, that could be Sea King from another dimension as well, and I can't wait to see what happens next. I think it was an awesome chapter, definitely thrown off by this last panel, but I'm reserved because I think Murata has something crazy in store for us. So, I'm Master, I hope you enjoyed the chapter 2, and I'll see you guys on the next video.